Hard Rock Atlantic City, let's go. This is the new Taj Mahal. And if you missed out on going to the Taj Mahal, the closest you're going to get is Hard Rock Atlantic City. Uh, this place is pretty stunning. If this is the way Hard Rocks are going to be moving forward, sign me up. I couldn't believe how beautiful it was the second I stepped in this place. Uh, I wasn't the only one who could believe how beautiful it was. There were several people in the lobby for a Tuesday at 4.30. The line to check in was snaked around more than a few times. Uh, thankfully though, it moved pretty quickly. I got to my room within 20 or 30 minutes. I'm staying in the North Tower. This is the cheapest room available. It's the Classic King. Hard Rock always does usually a really decent job at their entry level rooms and this one is no exception. The bathroom has a dual vanity, a huge shower with floor to ceiling glass and a water closet as well. It gets even better as you step into the main room. The bed is absolutely heavenly. It is a blissful place to be. Uh, there is a beautiful TV, there's a mini fridge, there is a comfy lounger, an oversized partner desk and floor to ceiling windows. The room isn't perfect though. The mechanical area makes weird grumbling noises sporadically throughout the day and night. And even though this does feel like a redo or a remodel, there are some miles on the room already. So I was definitely tired last night after a couple days of travel to get here, but I still had enough energy for dinner. I looked up the restaurants and the two I wanted to go to most were closed. So ultimately I decided to order room service and I'm kind of regretting that I did. I ordered a double chicken cob salad, which was double the mistake. That was a $40 error. Thankfully I ordered chicken wings as well and they did save the night. They actually stood no chance. They were pretty delicious, especially with that spicy honey sauce. I finished those faster than Usain Bolt runs the 200 meters and after that I was out. I hit that bed, I had a wonderful night's sleep and now it's officially day number one. The weather looks beautiful and I definitely want to take advantage of that but before I step outside it's time for breakfast. Wow Hard Rock was chaos this morning. It was bedlam. People walking around with lawn chairs and coolers. This definitely is not Las Vegas that is for sure. Uh, this casino is beautiful. I was able to get a couple shots of the casino floor this morning before it was too busy. It is just stylish, modern, trendy, chic, cool, upscale. I'm definitely looking forward to checking out more of it later in this video, but I only had one thing on my mind and that was breakfast. And I saw Alexia's and it was spectacular, literally spectacular. It is food that is crafted beautifully and placed artfully. For a cafe, it's actually quite a mesmerizing place to be. Uh, there's nothing wrong with family hotels. I'm going to have the best time ever. These next two nights are going to be amazing, but it is a family hard rock and I have encountered these before. I knew it the second I got to the indoor pool. Now the indoor pool in itself is not a dead giveaway. Growing up in the Midwest, the indoor pool at hotels is actually very commonplace. It's a great concept to lure people all year around, but I got outside to the adult pool deck and it was so basic. It was so bare bones. I could see that the 21 plus crowd really isn't catered to here. Uh, there was nothing out there, absolutely nothing. No vibe, no energy, no decor, no style, no hard rock edge, no view, no drinks, no wait staff, no bar, no water, nothing. There's nothing wrong with a family hotel. I think if you're coming to this hard rock, this is probably one of the coolest family hotels you could go to. I'm still gonna have the best time ever. I'm off to dinner and I think the steak I'm gonna order is gonna be one of the coolest things I've ever done on my channel. I'm gonna have the best time ever at this hard rock, but it's absolutely a family hotel. I might start becoming the tomahawk steak guy and it's going to be to my own chagrin because I'm almost always disappointed by the tomahawk. The only time I'm in love with the tomahawk, when I'm infatuated with the tomahawk, is when I'm not paying for it. But when I'm floating the bill, it's almost always an underwhelming experience. Uh, I just think that it's half bone, 
and half meat, so what are you really paying for? It's a thick cut of meat, it's difficult to cook perfectly, and overall, what are you really getting for $200, which was the cost last night? Now, don't get me wrong, it was a good steak, and I really had a nice time at Council Bluffs, but just in general, is the tomahawk experience really worth it? I don't know. Uh, Council Bluffs reminds me a lot of Tender Steakhouse at Luxor, Las Vegas, but more upscale. Besides the over-the-top tomahawk, the standout was the thick-cut bacon for sure. It was absolutely divine. It pretty much melted in my mouth. And surprisingly, I never saw this coming. I found the cocktails and the mixology to be amazing. Uh, it was a classic cocktail list. I'm typically not a fan of those. I find them to be highly predictable, highly conventional, highly boring. And last night reminded me when classic cocktails are made to perfection, they are absolutely sensational. This morning I woke up and I polished off the rest of that long bone for breakfast. It is my last day here and the sun is supposed to make an appearance, but not for another hour or two. So while I wait on it, I'm headed downstairs to get the action started. against each other only at the water gun front One of the main reasons for Hard Rock's insane popularity has to be its location. I understand I've only been in Atlantic City for about two nights, but its location seems pretty much perfect. It's right on the famous Atlantic City boardwalk. It's right across the street from Steel Pier and it steps away from the beach. Steel Pier was amazing in the sense that you just can't get that slice of Americana hardly anywhere else in America anymore. It is just gone the way of the dodo bird with the rides and the entertainment and the games and the food and just the fun all enveloped in a pure boardwalk setting. It's a more casual, approachable, pedestrian, authentic version of Santa Monica and I really enjoyed it out there. I'm actually hoping I can go back tonight when it's illuminated. I bet you it's really cool at night with lights. And then there's the beach, which is just steps away, and you're probably expecting me to be highly critical of the beach. Uh, after spending considerable time in Putacana, Cancun, and other lovely tropical destinations, I could see how you might think that, but for a New Jersey East Coast beach, I found it to be highly impressive. The sand was much more softer, brighter, sugary than I ever would have expected. The water was much more clear, calm, and tranquil than I ever expected. People were on the strand walking up and down it. Kids were building sandcastles. People were flying kites. Again, it's an old school slice of Americana, the trilogy of the boardwalk, the pier, and the beach, all coalescing into one combined experience right outside a fun property like Hard Rock in Atlantic City. I'm not sure that the moments I experienced today and the memories I made could be recreated anywhere else in America. All right, I'm back in the room after three hours and $300 at Kiro, and I must say it was sensational. It was marvelous. It's probably the reason to come here. It may not be a reason to stay here, but it's certainly a reason to enter the building. There are some things I've never seen before, such as the Zuke style sashimi, the cherry wood smoked, a5 Wagyu fat washed old fashioned. There was a special species of fish that could only be found in one lake in Japan. This is the only restaurant in the United States with access to that fish. And of course, the showstopper at any Japanese restaurant, the Volcanic Rock A5 Japanese Wagyu. It was an amazing experience and I can't wait to go back. I'm so happy that this was my last dinner and not my first. All right, I need to go walk off some of those calories and I think a good way to do that is by checking out some of the nightlife here at Hard Rock Atlantic City.
All right, Hard Rock, Atlantic City, three negatives, three positives. Let's get the negatives out of the way. The first one would be the layout. Uh, it is disjointed and disconnected. The spa and the pool are not centralized. They are located in the South Tower. And if you're not staying there, the trek down, over, and up is time consuming and painful. Also, the casino floor felt random and it really had poor flow. And overall, the property felt more impromptu and patchwork than it did polished. Number two would be the lack of 21 plus options. Now, I already talked about my grievances with the Sky Deck. Last night, I found out quickly that I think there are actually more restaurants than bars here. In fact, besides the lobby bar and the main casino bar, there might not be another bar inside the building. Absolutely no lounges or a nightclub which to me seems a little antithetical to the Hard Rock experience. And lastly, the overall experience was just off. It was off kilter. The remodeled room was nice, it was clean, it was fresh, but it definitely had some gremlins. Uh, some of the best restaurants were not open during the week, even though this is still prime time peak season here in Atlantic City. And given the great restaurant lineup and that this is an upper echelon hotel, the food was hit or miss. So those are the negatives, but what about the positives? Uh, I think the first big one would be the location. Now I've only been here for a few nights, but this seems like one of the best locations, if not the best in Atlantic City, right on the boardwalk, directly across from Steel Pier with the beach just steps away on the other side. Number two would be the huge casino floor. It is massive, it's sprawling, it is larger than the majority of casino floors in Las Vegas. It's absolutely humongous. And lastly, this place has extreme dexterity. And what I'm really saying is, it's great for people of all ages. I pretty much have accepted the fact that this is a family hotel. And I think it's a phenomenal option for those looking to take their kids to Las Vegas. I think there's so much more wholesome stuff to do here at the Hard Rock in Atlantic City, uh, whether it is the boardwalk, steel pier, the beach, the entertainment. So with all that being said, taking everything into account, I'm gonna give Hard Rock Atlantic City a three. In a lot of ways, it is so much more than I expected. And in some ways, it's a little bit of a disappointment. And even though I was disappointed by the lack of adult options, as well as the overall hit or miss experience, I think this is a really unique place. It's borderline special. And I can definitely see why it's one of the most popular resorts in Atlantic City.